it's time to learn about the chain rule, which is actually one of the differentiation techniques that comes back again and again and again and again and again throughout this course. So you will want to make sure you master this, and it's probably the trickiest of the differentiation techniques you've learned so far. So we use the chain rule to differentiate when we have a composition of functions. And this is just a reminder here that a composition is f of g of a, where you have an input a into an inside function f to get the output f of a, and that output becomes the input into the function g, which then gives you g of f of a, otherwise known as g compose f. And now I'm realizing that this should have said g compose f, because that is what we have diagrammed, with f as the inside and g as the outside function. Remember that composition is not commutative, which means that f of g of x is not the same as g of f of x, unless f and g are inverses of each other. So the first exercise we're going to do here is just to decompose functions into an inside and an outside function, and this will help you immeasurably when you start to learn how to differentiate using the chain rule. So in this first one, it might be easier to take sine squared and rewrite it with the sine of x all squared, because then it becomes clear that your inside function g is equal to sine. Remember that your inside function is going to be inside parentheses, perhaps underneath the radical, perhaps in a denominator. Your outside function f is going to be the square, so we just write x squared as your outside function. For number two, it looks like x squared is within the sign, that is inside because it's inside the parentheses. So here, your function f, excuse me, your function g, your inside function will be x squared, and your outside function f will be the sine of x. Going down to the next one, it looks like 3x is in the exponent, so that is in the parentheses, that is your inside function. So here your inside function is 3x, and your outside function, the f function, is e raised to the x. And then last, nicely, we have parentheses here, so we can easily state that our g function, our inside function, is x squared minus 1, and then our outside function is going to be x cubed. So let's just practice really quickly. Go ahead and pause this video and try these on your own, but I want you to use the graph of f here, the graph of g here, and these tabular values for g and f in order to evaluate the given compositions. All right, to check your work, uh, first thing I do for each of these is I evaluate the inside function. g of 2 I find from the graph is equal to 1, and then f of 1 I find from the graph of f is 0. f of 2 I find from the graph is 4, and then I evaluate g of 4 from the graph of g and get negative 1. Now I'm going to switch to the table. g of negative 4 is 7, so then I need f of 7, which is also on the table, that is 50. Still working on the table, f of 1 half is negative 1 half, so I need g of negative 1 half. That's not on the table, so I go to the graph, and it looks like g of negative 1 half is 3 and a half. Working on the table, f of 2 and a half is 7, and then g of 7 is 2.3. So now that we've reviewed uh, composition of functions, let's see how composition of functions lead us to finding the derivative. So we use the chain rule for differentiating compositions. And the chain rule basically says that f prime of x is the derivative of this composition g of, f of, or g of h of x. So what we're going to do to find f prime is to take the composition and to differentiate the outside function g, so g prime, leaving the inside function intact, and then multiply by the derivative of h, which is the inside function. So g prime of h, leaving the inside function intact, multiplying by the derivative of the inside function. So now you understand why we went ahead and identified the inside and the outside function on these four examples, because we're going to differentiate them now. Recall that we could write this as sine of x all squared. So what we want to do to get h prime is to differentiate the outside function. We do that by bringing down the 2 via the power rule, leaving the inside function intact. Now multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So sine goes to cosine. 
In number two, recall that your inside function is x squared. So when I get h prime, I need to take the derivative of sine, which is cosine, leaving my inside function intact, and then multiply by the derivative of that inside function, which is 2x. And of course, I can clean this up and write it as 2x times the cosine of x squared just to get my coefficient out in front. Doesn't matter if you do that, I just wanted to point it out. Now let's do the next one. My inside function here, of course, was 3x. So h prime is going to be the derivative of e, which it always goes to itself. So e to the 3x, leaving that inside function intact, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, and the derivative of 3x is 3. Last problem. First, I need to differentiate the outside function, which is my cubic. I do that by bringing down the 3 and then dropping a degree uh, with using the power rule, and then multiply by the derivative of this inside function, and also by the power rule, the derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. So I can clean this up and get it to be 6x times x squared minus 1 quantity squared.